Hey everybody, welcome back. So I got a special one-off episode for you today. We're gonna be working on my dad's, this is my dad, Jerry. Hello, hello, Jerry. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna be working on my dad's 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500, doing the front and rear brake uh, rotors and pads. So, how, how, uh, what's the history behind this oh, truck? Oh, I love this truck. Yeah. We got it from my father-in-law. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't even have 100,000 miles yet. It's very cool. And we love this truck. 20 years old. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's got a little bit of a, a shake when we put the brakes on, so we're hoping to fix that problem. So let's fix that right now. <laughs> So the Chevy Silverado is actually very easy to replace brakes on or brake rotors on, especially compared to my Dodge Ram, if you've watched my older videos about that. With that, the rotor and the hub on the front are all one big piece. So if you have, so if you have to do a brake rotor, you're doing your wheel hub, you're doing your you know, bearings, all that at the same time. But this, the rotor is actually a separate piece, which is very, very cool. So this kit is actually a heavy duty uh, brake uh, rotor and pad kit from Power Stop, and this was the most heavy duty kind of towing rated kit that we could get because my dad has a giant uh, drop trailer. He likes to haul like <laughs> tons of rocks in. So we wanted to go with something as heavy duty as possible. And there's also a couple other little things you'll need as well, but we'll get to that as we go. So we're gonna start with the front brakes. All right, cool, so we got our front wheels off. The next thing we gotta do is we have to open our brake fluid reservoir and take about two thirds of the brake fluid out because when we compress the calipers, brake fluid from the lines are gonna pump up and if you don't do that, then you're gonna leak brake fluid all over the place. That's not good, so don't do that. Okay, so here are all the tools and supplies you're going to need to do this brake job for the front. Oh, just so you know, I'm gonna be cutting between the front passenger and the front driver's side brakes a little bit. I might even label it down in the corner which side you're looking at at that time. I use the driver's side as a bit of a refresher how to do this whole thing. So anyway, here we go. This is everything you're gonna need. First off, we got brake cleaner. We got brake and caliper grease. We've got medium strength thread logger. We're gonna need a series of rags. Uh, we've got half inch ratchets, a breaker bar, torque wrench, flathead screwdriver, two. You're gonna need at least one, but for a Silverado, it's kinda nice to have two eight inch C-clamps, a brake caliper compressing tool, and then also 10 millimeter socket, needle nose pliers, a uh, T55 socket, and an 18 millimeter socket. All right, let's get to work. All right. We'll leave that in a second. Yep. Brake lines free. Okay, with our brake lines all clear, now's the time to remove our caliper. You're going to need your T55 socket and a breaker bar. There we go. Okay. Top one is cracked loose. Ooh. Whew. Did I do that one by hand? I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get the uh, the bolts out, it, it still doesn't want to remove. It's loose, but it doesn't want to come off. So what you're going to need is your eight inch C clamps. Slide our caliper over here out of the way. I'm gonna attach it here. One thing I actually forgot to bring up that you can do to make this whole process easier is you can, depending on what side of the truck you're working on, you can turn the steering wheel so that everything can kind of face out. So, oh, perfect.
The rotor is actually not held on by anything on a Silverado, at least a 2000 Silverado. Sometimes there'll be a small screw or something to keep it in place. Sometimes the screw will be over here. And if you're gonna reuse your rotor or something, you can be more careful about it. Sometimes you can hit on the outside of the rotor. Sometimes you can hit in here. And if you don't really care about it, There it goes. Off. Ta-da. Okay, so my dad used this opportunity with everything off to grease all of the different certs in here and so forth. This is now nice and clean and free of any debris or any chunks of rust. Simply what, what we do here is place the rotor on backwards using a clean rag and some brake cleaner. The reason for doing this is because Brake rotors are shipped with a protecting film so they don't rust while they're in storage or in shipment. Put it on like this. And wipe it off. All right, time to apply our thread locker to our caliper bracket bolts. Okay, time to install our new retainer clips, and of course you wanna make sure that they match exactly. Great, so time to put our new brake pads in. I, did a, I went ahead and did a dry fit here, um, so Again, want to make sure with the old pads that everything matches. On the Silverado here, your squealers, these little uh, metal tabs here that are gonna, when your brakes wear out, the outside is gonna have two, and the inside pad is just gonna have one. Right there. Excellent. Slide our pad into the and bam. All right, so now it's time to put our brake caliper back on. We need to compress the pistons um, back so that we have space to clear our new super thick pads. You will see there's a bunch of grime here, so you don't wanna just push that back in because it will destroy these rubber boots. You just wanna break, put it on a cloth and then clean it off by hand. Brake caliper back on. We've got these rubber boots we're contending with here. We have to compress nicely, like that. Final step is you want to take your caliper bolts. The interesting thing about this Silverado is the caliper bolts are also your guide pins, all in one. How, how convenient. That's actually kind of cool. It's like surprisingly simple, this truck, which is really cool. So. We're cleaning our guide pins off, or bolts, or both, because they're both. <laughs> we grease this portion, but not this portion, of the bolt. We want to make sure that this slides nice and easily, of course. We take our medium strength thread locker and we apply it to the threads up at the top here. Last thing to do, take your torque wrench and your T55 and torque these bad boys to 100, uh, not 180 foot pounds. Yeah, babe. Click her back in like that, and you're done. Okay, so we got our back of the truck here up on jack stands, nice and secure. Uh, went ahead and already cleaned this side. I'm not gonna go into as much detail on the back as on the front because a lot of it is exactly the same, but a couple things are different. The hardware, your pins here, and your um, caliper bracket bolts are different as well. Um, you're going to need a shallow 18 millimeter and a shallow 12 millimeter, along with smaller head 3 8 torque wrench because there's some clearance issues in the back. So let's get this done. Okay, new rotor time, everyone. 
And as you can see, the design of the back is a little bit different. So for this one, you're gonna wanna clean here, but also on the inside as well to make sure that that film is not present. All right, so our brake caliper bracket here has been cleaned up. Uh, went ahead and went outside and sprayed brake cleaner inside these holes to get all the gunk out. And you have to torque it to 148 foot-pounds. So good luck. Yeah, keep going. Real quick. Yeah, properly torqued. For these bolts, you actually are supposed to use a little bit, just a tiny bit, high strength red. Okay, friends, our rear brake is almost done. You just want to torque your caliper mounting guide pins to 31 foot-pounds. Last thing you want to do is just pump your brakes until your pedal is firm. All you're doing is just pushing those, those pistons back out at all four wheels. So you're done. Okay. You're done. Sweet. That's it. All right. We've changed brakes on your truck now. Sweet. All right, sir. Thanks, it was a lot of fun. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching very much and uh, change your brakes on your Silverado, it's easy. All right, I'm gonna go take a break. I'm done. <laughs> You're going to need an 18 millimeter shallow socket like this one for your 18. <laughs> You're going to need a, you don't you laugh at me. Don't you do it. <laughs> You're going to, <laughs> You're going to need <laughs> you're going to need an 18 millimeter shallow socket like this one for your cali caliper. You're going to need an 18 millimeter shallow socket like this one for your caliper mounting bracket. Oh my gosh! Okay, I got it.